I'm Taylor Collins, executive producer here at BG24 News. Every week we bring you the stories that matter most on campus, in the community, across the state, and across the nation. The producers panel is where we take a step back and talk about stories in our own opinion. But these opinions do not reflect the views of the organization and do not impact the way we cover these or other stories. Tonight, we'll discuss Bowling Green Police and their recent use of pepper spray this past weekend. We'll also discuss the arrival of Pope Francis to the United States. We'll then dive into recent comments made about Republican presidential candidate Ben Carson. Finally, we'll discuss the passing of baseball legend Yogi Berra and how baseball fans have paid tribute. It's all here on your BG24 News Producers Panel. Welcome back. I'm here with news director Alexis Cook, producer Isabella Maney, and news reporter Amy Sterwall. Thank you for joining us tonight, guys. Thank you for, Thank you for having us. Bowling Green police resorted to using pepper spray this past Sunday in two separate instances downtown. Officers arrested two suspects after the altercations. So do you guys feel that like this police force is just too much for a college town, or do you think it's just excessive, or what do you guys feel about it? Well, certainly I think that this was a little bit, I, I don't know the exact situation and what exactly was happening, but I think that this would definitely scare students as it would anyone. But um, more importantly, I think Bowling Green is such a small town that this is something that could really impact the police, the police department's reputation. And I think that's something that they really need to take into consideration the next time when they're making these taking these decisions, I feel like it might have been slightly harsh based on, again, I don't know the situation, but, you know, they really kind of got to consider what students are doing and how they're going to react because the next time they see them, they're going to make their decision accordingly. I agree to some point, but in a sense, sometimes pepper spray is necessary. You know, with everything going on in the world today, these shootings are really getting out of hand. So I feel like um, maybe sometimes pepper spray might be used. I've been to parties where there's 300 kids and there's yeah. six police officers and you can't really control mm -hmm. yeah, 300 fair. kids with six of you so instead mm -hmm. of pulling out guns and shooting or anything I think pepper spray might have to work but not as steadily as it's been yeah I think I mean obviously I wasn't there and I don't know the situation but from what I've read I, I don't know necessarily I mean I wish I knew how many people they were trying to break up and really what the purpose was to have that pepper spray but I mean you know in a town and I say town instead of city because right. it is Bowling Green. I, I don't know how necessary it might have been, but like you said, I've been I've also been to parties where it's overwhelming how many people there are. Right. So in that sense, I absolutely can see why they would go to pepper spray. And obviously, I pref would much rather prefer them to use pepper spray than obviously like you hear all these horror stories about you know cops right. shooting like innocent people right. and like that kind of police brutality. I don't know necessarily I think that this is police brutality, but I definitely think it is something to think about, um, just that it did happen in a place like Bowling Green. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that, that, that's a, that is a very good point. I feel like too much in the past, too many times in the past year, we have heard of cops using, you know, guns, use of cops using assault. They've been using their power a little bit too much, and mm -hmm. pepper spray is a good way for them to, you know, make their point, right. but in a way that's not going to permanently injure someone. Right, yeah, exactly. And obviously, I mean, they had a purpose for using it. They right, didn't just right. pull it out on somebody who was, you know, walking down the street, doing nothing. Like, obviously, this person or, you know, whatever the situation was, um, you know, they were doing something that was out of line and probably breaking laws, rules, and whatnot. And so I think it's okay. Like, right. it's pepper spray. It's not, like all of you said, right. it's not a bullet. It's not a knife. It's not beating them up. And, you know, if you have to do that to get somebody to listen and, you know, stop what they're doing, if they're doing anything wrong, then do it. Because they obviously deserved it if they're doing that stuff. I also I feel, feel like... Bad. I know that Bowling Green is a small city, but we do get a lot of influx of people, like mm -hmm. from Toledo, Perrysburg. I'm actually from Cleveland, and I know a lot of people that come down, yeah. you know, on these weekends. So it could have been a person that wasn't even a Bowling Green mm -hmm. or nearby resident mm -hmm. that just got really crazy, and they just want to control the city because they know that it is a college town, mm -hmm. and there are families that live here and kids that could be out and things right. of that nature. So they have to just really be careful about how they 
presented to like the city. I think that other um, police departments, even across the nation, should take this into you know, consideration looking at how they handle this situation because, again, too often we hear of police overreacting, doing things that aren't necessary, and this is a way that for them to gain control of a situation without making headlines or, yeah. you know, causing a court case that's going to be nationally recognized. This is definitely an example that I think other people, especially police departments, Yeah, need I to think especially with, to. because we are a college town and we have, um, just it's so youthful that I think that they, they did it the best they could without harming anyone in the process. So, I mean, I mean harming people, sure, but nothing detrimental, so. Exactly. Coming up when we return, we'll discuss the recent arrival of the Pope in America. Stay with us. This past week, Pope Francis arrived in America. He started his journey in Washington, D.C., then to New York, ending in Philadelphia. During it all, he made an address to Congress about the obligation lawmakers have to help fight climate change. Um, so I actually was able to watch him speak to Congress and it was pretty awesome. Um, I thought he did a great job speaking. I know personally that his uh, first language is not English. Yeah. And he had like a 53 minute speech and he said a lot of words very well and I was like really moved by what he was talking about. Um, one of the major topics he discussed was like poverty mm -hmm. and how like wealth like stricken a lot of America is even though we have that American dream and you come here to fulfill you know your you know your American mm -hmm. dream and there's so much poverty and just like bad things going on in the world so mm -hmm. I'm kind of glad that he touched on it. I think he's an awesome Pope to have <laughs> right now during what we are going through nationally and within our country especially being a part of the Catholic Church I know that there are multiple issues that are highly debated in the church as well as outside the church, such as gay marriage, which is something that has obviously been a huge attention this year, being that it was legalized back this summer. And the way that he approaches these really challenging issues I think is awesome because he takes it on a peace standard. He doesn't specifically say, you know, this person shouldn't be doing this, this person should be doing this. Rather, he takes it in a matter of we need to treat all people with peace. We need to approach this in a nonviolent way and we need to be accepting of it. We need to, you know, he's not saying, you know, we should have gay marriage or we should not have gay marriage based off of what the Catholic Church teaches, but he teaches it from a matter of peace, which I think is very important and the first step towards people becoming more used to changes like this. And yeah. like you said, um, you know, coming from someone who's not as religious, um, I have so much respect for him because he really just caters to everyone, you right. know. He doesn't judge people for, you know, if they, you know, aren't very religious or whatnot. And, you know, whether your political views or whatnot, he's very accepting of others. And um, just about, like, the climate change and whatnot, he, you know, believes that there's something, you know, going on and whatnot. And I know a lot of people, you know, kind of, like, who are, you know, more, like, religious or whatnot, they don't go towards science, you know, right, yep. right. think of that stuff. But he obviously is, you know, making it a point to say that, yes, there is something going on here, and it's scientifically stated that there is. Right. Yeah, I think he does, he's so well-spoken, and the way he goes about talking about, because we are in such a progressive time right now, you know, with the legal, like the legalization of gay marriage and all that and everything going on, I feel like he does so well because Catholicism isn't, you could not, you could argue it's not as progressive, um, just with the views, but be, even though he is a part of that, he does so well, like you said, speaking mm -hmm. to to the, the, the population right and that I think that's really powerful and it speaks a lot for the Catholic Church that he is like right like you know they're rep I guess they're representative in like mm -hmm. a lot of more ways than one and I just think he's so he's just articulate with the way he goes about it and I really think he does care more you know than anything about the well-being of you know humanity and itself right exactly the other day he canceled his lunch with one of the members of Congress or something like that to have to serve lunch to the homeless in Central Park. And I wow. thought that that was just so cool because mm -hmm. what, Paul, like he's yeah. the most important man in the church and he's mm -hmm. about to, you know, crash on a picnic bl blanket <laughs> with a bunch of homeless people and feed them. And I think that that's really showing that he's for the people. He's not saying, I'm the head of the church. I am mm -hmm. for the people, which mm -hmm. gains him so much respect from multiple different right. groups. And one of, speaking of for the people, one of the topics he touched on was immigration. And I thought, wow, this is a really big topic. Yeah. Yeah. Inside of today, we need to talk on it. And he's, you know, considered an immigrant, I guess, mm -hmm. because he's, you know, not American. And it just was really interesting to just see, like, we're all people. 
we should all love and help one another to make this society better. And I think that was like the main point that he got because so many different people were at this Congress meeting and just people were watching it. And it just was like really good to just come together as a whole, as a human race and not separate the races and the ethnicities and the religions and just come together as a whole. Yeah, no, his message is important and I think uh, just as a society we can hopefully learn from it because it's true, everything should be as inclusive as he makes it. So right. I think he's doing a great job. I think that one other thing that makes him so appealing to people is he is so accepting of the modern times. I mean, mm -hmm. I saw something on Twitter that he was going around taking selfies with people. Yeah. And I think with that Obama. That he, yeah. he took them with Obama. Yeah. Was... And the fact that the Pope is taking selfies, I think people are kind of like, oh, the Pope is cool now. Like, you know. <laughs> but in this are... day and age, you have to really get accustomed to, to social media. Social media is such a big part of our society in every aspect that I can personally think well, of. Well, he has so a Twitter. Yeah. He's Does got he a Twitter. Really? I tweeted at him a couple times. <laughs> so, what does he tweet about, though? He, he tweets a lot of, um, about his visit to the United States, but a lot of um, just, he'll tweet in times of when there's question in the church and inspirational. just inspirational Bible yeah. quotes, I think, mm -hmm. which is good, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, something in this, definitely in this different. Day, you, have to, you have to really, that's how you get to a, such a, like a, a large demographic of people because social media, everyone has a Facebook, everyone right. has a Twitter. Yeah. That's how you get, you know, I don't want to say your name out there, but that's how people know who you are. And that's how, right. especially our younger generations who right. really don't know or their parents aren't teaching them yet. That's a really good way for him to Another get out. Another concern with the Catholic Church is that a lot of they're losing members they're losing you know right. younger members you know and having the pope to have a twitter is a great way <laughs> for us to gain some back yeah so. and also his views on things i mean he is like in the mindset of pleasing not only those who you know have been within the catholic community for a while but also those who may even be interested and it's like right. i feel right. like he's bringing more he's going to be the one to bring more people into you know, learning the more church. about Catholicism mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. Because, I mean, like I said before, there's our generation now, there's not a lot of religious. No, not our, no. The millennials we're, we're, we're very just, secular. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so it's like, I was listening to him and I was like, oh my gosh, like, he really <laughs> has a point. He's like, definitely <laughs> someone that's going to turn the church around. I yes, feel like. I definitely think so too. It's yeah, excited. It, he's the image, you know, of Catholicism, like in our modern, you know, time era. So, like, for him to really do everything he can to represent, you know, what it is and be that icon, I think he's doing a great job, especially to our generation, because I just feel like there hasn't been a pope who's done something like this. I don't yeah. I, I literally cannot remember. Exactly. At and all. you probably can't even remember because it was never like publicized like this. He was right. never as right. open, never as public, didn't do as much in the press as this pope is doing right now. And I Yeah. It's yes. it's working. So I I appreciate it. <laughs> I saw today in um on Twitter that he went to the um 9/11 memorial, which oh, I thought wow. was something wow, really yeah. moving. He is going to national landmarks, parts of America that really speak to mm -hmm. us that really define the past two couple generations and he is saying I, I see that this is going on I see that this is happening and I feel for you he talked to the families of the fallen too which I thought was something very personal something very touching a very American way to welcome people into yeah. our country mm -hmm. this is his first time in America so I can't wait for his return and just yeah, to see how much back. Love. <laughs> he's gonna get so much love when he yeah. returns he, really is. he yeah. had <laughs> such a good first trip yeah, here he did. yeah. Coming up when we return. We'll discuss the recent comments from residential presidential candidate Bill Carson. Stay tuned. This past Sunday, the Republican presidential candidate appeared on Meet the Press, where NBC's Chuck Todd asked Ben Carson the hard questions. Carson responds to one of the interview questions, has people talking all over. When asked if he believed if Islam is consistent with the Constitution, Carson responded that he did not believe or advocate that a Muslim should be in charge of the nation. So I watched this and I didn't even know how to react at first. I was like, America is for everyone. Yeah. This is what America, since I was a little kid, this is what America has stood for accepting everybody, races, genders, ethnicities. So for him to come out and publicly say, like, if the values of the Islamic community don't match the ones of the Constitution, then we shouldn't follow them. And I just feel like that's like hypocrisy almost. 
I mean, here's my thing. He is, you know, obviously a Republican candidate. He's African American, and you're discriminating against, you know, a group of people. Exactly. How, you know, like kind of almost like, how like how dare you? Because right. like, how can you go through, you know, the oppression in your life and get to where you are and not advocate for other types of people? Because you know, religion has nothing to do with what. A politician might right. do it shouldn't, and right. if, if he's insinuating that it does, then there, there's a whole problem with that. I just I can't. I was shocked when right. I watched it because I was like, how could you, like, say something like that, like, like just so openly and so confidently yeah. too. Well, I, as a po oh, as a politician, you know, this is a time for you to be gaining more followers and exactly. whatnot. And he lost so many by this comment. I mean, not just the Muslim community. But he lost others who support those who, you know, are a minority. Right. And, and it's just like, if he believes in that, then what else does he believe in? Does he believe that, you know, um, other religions shouldn't, you know, be in charge of the nation or, you know, stuff like that. And I feel like he's not going to go past this at all. Like, he's not going to get far. He actually, um, I was reading before we went on the show that, you know, people are saying that they're agreeing with him. Like, he's getting s much more support than I would have thought that he would get for making this comment, which is, is actually very scary. And, like, yeah, as yeah. a society, like, what does that say about America and our values mm -hmm. that we are so still put so much hate and discrimination against a type of religion and type of people that we should be welcoming. I mean, America's a melting pot at exactly. the end of the day. I think that, I mean, personally, before he made this comment, he had my vote. I really, really liked what he was advocating for. I liked the way he responded to many challenging questions and debates. Um, but this comment really kind of set me back. I in no way agree with it. But in some way, I can't understand how people are thinking this out. I think that it's sad that we still do associate a lot of Muslim people with danger. However, if I per se, a very open Muslim were to run for president, I think a lot of people would be very up in arms, which is completely ridiculous. But he does, I think he is addressing something that many people just don't know how to handle. But that is definitely not something I would have said if I were running for president, mm -hmm. and definitely not something I agree with at all. He almost belittled the Islamic uh, community, because I actually like watched the video mm -hmm. on it, and he was like, I don't have a problem with them, you know, like running for Congress, but you know, being the, the president is, of the United what's the States. Difference you know? at that point, I said, you know? they're gonna be little, so they can't be president, but they, they're, they're fine for Congress. It just, yeah, and not first off, laws have to go through Congress exactly. to even make it. So, okay, so basically he's saying he wouldn't, he wouldn't mind them running our country because everything has to go through Congress before it's even passed, like by the president. Exactly. That doesn't make any sense at all. I just, I just think it's so crazy because, you know, we're, how can you say something like that when we have a biracial president and we mm -hmm. have a woman running for president mm -hmm. right now? And it's like, how can you say that about, you know, a group of people and like really, truly like discriminate against them? I just, it really blows my mind because I just don't understand how he can honestly say that. and. He was so confident. He literally was like, I do not advocate for it. I don't think it would be best for the country. Like, how can you make that, that one statement of judgment on a whole community of people? That's just so, it's just so, un, just I don't think what America should go for. And the fact that he's getting even a little bit of support is well, mind blowing. I will say that maybe it's a blessing and a curse at the same time because it's like maybe right now we're thinking why did he do that but what if he were to cover that up and we wouldn't know until he got into the do you finals think that's possible that do you think that he could come back from this well i'm not sure if it's possible i'm saying if we learn this later on down the road when if he were to possibly make it into right. the running of presidential like cam campaign or whatnot and you know we I might mean, not have a choice the other exactly. Way. Right. So I'm glad that you know we found this out now than later on. Right. Right. Yeah, and I think this ties back into a lot of just the Republican debates in general. They've just been. They've I don't know if any one of you have been watching them. <laughs> they've just been a little 
just not I feel appropriate mm. really? they're just well, I they mean, don't I don't feel like I'm watching a debate have, I feel like I'm you watching have Donald cable. Trump in these debates who makes obscene comments against right. the Latin community everything you know being Latina it's it's disgusting to watch and it's like for me I just can't believe that he actually is getting support and then mm -hmm. with another Republican candidate saying something against another group of people to discriminate like when are people gonna to stop doing that to minorities because eventually minorities aren't gonna be minorities and we're all gonna eventually be the the same amount of people and it's yes. like when are you gonna what are you gonna do then like I just it blows my mind like that him and even like the, like you said the debates have been crazy with like Donald Trump and just even well, other Republican there was the candidates. one the one candidate that dropped out and he encouraged other Republican candidates to drop out with him because he said you know 16 of us are not gonna be able to conquer Donald Trump. We need one and strong that's, person that's who's terrifying. going to be able to conquer him and that's what that's what they really the solution to this is definitely coming up next we'll discuss the recent passing of baseball legend Yogi Berra stay with us baseball legend Yogi Berra died this past Tuesday he was 90 years old baseball friends everywhere have been showing their remorse and celebrating his amazing baseball career last night the New York Yankees honored Berra before the game at the, after the Chicago White Sox so I knew about Yogi Berra just a little bit prior to this. Um, I knew that he was like a war vet in World War II, which I thought was pretty awesome. And he was like a Hall of Famer, like an all-star like baseball player. And like a lot of people loved him. Um, I have like, you know, my family are, are actually Yankees fans. So yeah. I, I knew about him just a little, but I didn't really know mm -hmm. as much. But they really honored him at this game. Yeah, it, I thought it was really, I mean, I'm a Red Sox fan, so it's hard <laughs> for me to say this. But I thought it was really tasteful how the Yankees did it. I mean, he was such a legend. Like you could compare it like for the Red Sox, like, you know, um, pesky and like all that stuff and he was just he's been around forever and it was you know awesome to see him honored like that because he deserved it. I think that it's um, fitting that he was a war vet and he was a baseball player and he was a coach you know yeah. that's yeah. so well rounded and yes. I feel like that speaks to this generation that saying that oh you can do all of this stuff you don't have to just mm -hmm. focus your career on baseball mm -hmm. you can give back to the community you can serve your country you can you know and the fact that he stayed with the Yankees, he's, right. he's not being traded to this, that yeah. team, and another team, coaching for this team. You know, he, he stayed loyal to his team, which is something you really don't see nowadays that all too often. So I think it was a bittersweet moment for both the Yankees and for baseball in general. And he lived to be 90, so yeah, I mean, like, he, he had, lived a he had a life. Life, full but, life, you know, he really worked hard. Like, definitely. So what are you guys' plans for this weekend? Are we doing anything fun? <sighs> Homework. Uh, yeah, I literally lots have of two <laughs> exams next week, and I am cramming up. I'm literally sick, and yeah. it's only September. Yeah. What yeah. are we going to do in November when it's really crunch time? I don't even want to think weeks, about it. Two weeks to fall break. Two and weeks I'm ready to fall break. To go home. <laughs> <laughs> I always count down to whenever the breaks are. That's like right. I always count down to. Yes. Fall semester goes quickly. Spring semester is usually the one. We only have that one yeah, break. Yeah, it really yeah. Drags, drags spring semester. But so fall, you have yeah. all those little breaks and they're nice. I'm it's honestly nice. just ready for Christmas. That's all. I'm oh my God, Christmas. you're jumping the know. gun on that one. I'm already Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. No, it's I, fall. No, I want. Think, I want Thanksgiving. No, I love Christmas. I love the fall time though. I love <laughs> yeah. like, you know Please. the. I know Starbucks drinks <laughs> for the fall, and but I also like, like apple cider. And, you know, oh yeah, caramel balls, powdered donuts. I love all, fall. Cutest outfits season. too, fall. Right? So. Yeah, <laughs> wear the infinity scarves. And <laughs> well, that's all for BG24 News producers panel tonight. Check out these stories and more at YouTube.com/bt24news. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and now Instagram, and feel free to tweet us about what you think about these stories and issues. Have a good night, everyone.